WinBet, the official sports book partner of the Memphis Grizzlies, is Tennessee's premier digital sports betting app. They're bringing you the action of real money sports betting right in the palm of your hand with some of the best odds in the game. From boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport, they have what you need to win. Sign up today and use the promo code GRIZ. And after placing your first $10 wager, you'll receive $200 to bet with. That's G-R-I-Z-Z. There's no better way to enjoy basketball than with some extra winnings in your pocket to use for all of your favorite bets. And be sure to check out the WinBet Sports Bar at FedEx Forum the next time you catch our Grizzlies in action. Betting is a team sport. Join the WinBet team and bet with the best. Must be physically located in Tennessee and 21 years of age or older to participate. If you or someone you know needs assistance with a gambling problem, call the Tennessee Red Line at 1-800-889-9789. Lieutenant, can you tell us what happened today? Our officers responded to a crash on I-40 westbound this morning. The driver of a pickup truck lost control of the vehicle, veered left, and went into a ditch. 911, what's your emergency? We've been in a crash. Please send someone. My fiancé is hurt. A front seat passenger was wearing a seatbelt. She survived without injury. The driver was not wearing a seatbelt and was ejected from the truck. He died at the scene. Law enforcement writes tickets to save lives. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. What a great day and great year to get a new edge out of life. Exotic Bliss has all the freshest beauty products, including lipstick, eyeshadow, and our new edge control that comes in Blissful Noir and regular. And all our products are vegan and cruelty-free. Beauty is bliss, and this is something you don't want to miss. Look your best with Exotic Bliss products. You can find us in the beauty section at all Superlow Foods store locations. Superlow Foods is a proud partner of the Memphis Grizzlies. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit Grizzly com slash community slash education today. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Hi, here are your three drinks and slushes. Enjoy your Sonic. Oh, the best part about the Sonic app is definitely that the drinks are always half price. This is happy hour all the time. It's happy hour. It's happy hour. Yeah. Happy hour. Oh. And we all lived happily ever after. Oh. <laughs> it's happy hour every hour with the Sonic app. Get half price drinks and slushes whenever you order with the app. This is how we Sonic. Exclusions apply. See app for details. Limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Hear that? That's the plumpest, juiciest hot dogs you've ever seen getting their grill on. But we both know what'll make it sound even better. Oh yeah, it's a Pepsi to go with your hot dog. Because when you're chomping on America's favorite meal, relish, mustard, and onions perfectly blending into a crescendo of flavor, there's only one thing that makes everything about that moment better. A cold, refreshing Pepsi. See what I mean? It's like music to my ears. Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Ah. Live from FedEx Forum, this is the Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com. Presented by WinBet. Now, here's your host, Chris Vernon. Fuck. 
noon on GarageCityMedia.com. It's Chris Vernon. Show. Welcome, 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 welcome. It's a Friday, June 24, 2022 edition of the show. Today on the show, it was quite the eventful NBA draft night. We will go through everything that took place. We will also go through everything that took place with the Memphis Grizzlies. A couple of their draft picks, David Roddy and Kennedy Chandler, both going to join us in studio today. So we'll get to meet those guys for the first time. And we will go through everything that happened in last night's NBA draft. It is a Friday. It's nice outside. Smile. Let's do it. Turn it up. For the next Super excited because today on the show, David Roddy is going to uh, be here. And what a crazy circumstance last night was where the Grizzlies trade up and take David Roddy 23rd, which was higher than anyone had him projected. And it just so happened it was an individual. Now, I look, I'm going to give you the, the God's honest truth. I had absolutely... No information that the Grizzlies had interest in David Roddy. I just found him to be insanely intriguing. And yesterday we mentioned him again. We were talking about these guys that are players of the year in good conferences that end up being good. And everybody's like, well, well, why did so-and-so go so low in the draft? And And we mentioned like so many of them all the way to last year's Herb Jones, who was another one. There's like... Eight or nine of them that we rattled off over the years. Jay Crowder, Draymond Green, Chandler Parsons, Malcolm Brogdon, on and on and on. These and that the and that the draft in some sometimes gets ageist. Um, and then the other thing was he had fit the mold of a like what the Grizzlies draft, right? Which is this crazy thing where the, a player has proven to be extremely good already. And then they take him, and then he is unbelievably extremely good. This has happened with Brandon Clark. This has happened with Desmond Bain. And now the next in line is hopefully David Roddy. So they took David Roddy, and that was after they had shocked us by trading up to 19. We thought they were not going to trade pick 22 and 29. Thought they might come away with a few players from last night. Instead, they come away from with five from last night, two of which are going to join us in studio today. But uh, Jake LaRavia, uh, they took with 19th pick. So everybody's Googling immediately, finding out everything they want to know about Jake LaRavia. Then they take David Roddy, which anybody that listened to this show had uh, was very uh, well informed about David Roddy. And then, as Kennedy Chandler is dropping, you can't help but think thoughts. I mean, we knew that Kennedy Chandler just worked out for them a few days ago. We knew he had a prior relationship with John Moran. We knew that kid's got a great head on his shoulders and was the ninth-ranked player in that class just a year removed, and it's not like he didn't go to Tennessee and play well. Uh, Played very well there. And so they're able to get Kennedy Chandler by trading up to 38. And then they take a guy, uh, Vince Williams, with that 40-something pick. And, again, Google time. And then we hear about some undrafteds that they have either added to two ways. But uh, they solidified they are going to have – one of the most fun summer league teams that has ever been assembled. Uh, and so you come out of last night rather excited about what we're about to see over the course of the next few weeks. And you got to know me and Roser were thrilled. Before I get to anything, I welcome John Roser to the show. John Roser, a.k.a. the Cologne Ranger, the Body Spray Bandit, Senior Sack, a.k.a. Johnny Backpole, Johnny Bearcat, a.k.a. the Grim Roser. 
John Hustle, Johnny Asparagus, Johnny Netcarb, a.k.a. Johnny Laravia. What up? Real quick, uh, shout out, longtime listener, buddy of mine, Randall. He and his fiance Leah, get married tomorrow. Wow. So congratulations. Love you both. I'll see you at the wedding. Um, for the culture. For the culture. Oh, Devin Walker's here. He is the microphone mangler. He is Senor Quasadilla. Mr. Man. Navajo Joe. He is the Look at the size of that camera. Look at that camera. You look at that? Look at that. Look at that. You know it's a big day we bring out the big guns, you know? Wow. You know, it's a big, bang, it's a, bang. The big guns are here. But yeah, yeah. shout out to Jake LaRavia. Oh, really? What, yeah. Wait, what? No. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> no. Hey. What are we doing? Hey, Devin, stay on that side. Stay, stay on, on that, that side. side. Tell him. Oh. Hey, tell him, John Morant. <laughs> tell him, John Morant, stay on that side. Hey, everybody stay on that side when they switched up. You switched up, stay on that side. This man. Is my video. <laughs> stay, <laughs> stay on that side. Stay on that side. That's my exact just because we, so hey, so we took a white guy at 19. Stay on that side, man. man I there he is, Jake. Oh, telling you. Oh. Let's go, Jake. Yeah, Jake. <laughs> tell, hey, Jake, tell him, Jake. Tell him. <laughs> Tell them, shh. Hey, Jake, I told y'all. Anybody oh, that, and anybody that wears zero, that, that's the yeah. nobody believed in me. It's, I came from I, nothing. I love it. I wear it because that's how many stars they gave me in exactly. high school. That's actually exactly. why they have to trade to Anthony Melton. <laughs> Jake <laughs> Morgan, <laughs> the boy number zero. I wear zero because this is how many people can guard me. Like, let's go. I'm, I'm here for it. Hey, Jake LaRavia, I'm here for it, baby. Anybody Jake. that puts on that Bill Street Blue, I'm rocking with you. Oh, my let's God. Go. Jake LaRavia. And he plays uh, with sauce. And uh, head, he plays with sauce and a headband. Uh, three years ago, Jake LaRavia was an unrated recruit who had chosen SIU Edwardsville over offers from Evansville, Hillsdale College, IUPUI, and Incarnate Word. Today, he is a first-round NBA <laughs> draft pick. That was Derek Schultz last night tweeted that. That is insane. Started from right? the bottom, baby. That's incredible. Started from the An bottom. unrated here. draft pick. So last night, let's start with him because – and then I'll get to the draft as uh, at large. So last night, as you know, we go way back with uh, Steve Forbes, who now, coincidentally – is the head coach at Wake Forest. Um, and I text Forbes last night, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, this is too perfect. We got your guy. A, you have to come on the show tomorrow. And he was like, oh, no. He's, he, he was catching a flight this morning to go out recruiting. So we weren't going to be able to catch up with him. Um, uh, but his first thing he said to me was, he is a stud. And I was like, oh, yeah? And then he said, I said, did you know the Grizzlies liked him? And he said, I did. And he said, but I knew Minnesota liked him as well. And he went back twice to Milwaukee, and he went back twice to Golden State. Mm. So that bodes well, yeah. right? I mean, those are two, two good, teams. good teams, smart yeah. teams, right, um, that obviously had increased interest in him. Um, and he said he's highly versatile can really pass, can make the three or score off the bounce, moves his feet extremely well on the defensive end, very competitive, high basketball IQ. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, that's his college coach. And and look. He dropped 31 on Carolina, too, by the way. And look, let me just uh, – allow me to tell you that this isn't like uh, – like I've known this guy for many, many years. Right. I'm not just I'm, I'm not just texting as like a reporter like hey like he would level with me and he's like dude he's he's good 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 you know this our third he loved him. you know this our third player from Indiana right well uh Dez and you're are you're not counting Jim. Con- oh James from okay because because Conchar he played in Indiana yeah. but he I mean it's Midwest yeah so we're the Midwest Grizzlies I mean much. Look, you're trying to you're trying to increase your footprint in the region. There you That's go. what they're always talking about on the <laughs> business side. <laughs> I'll tell you this: thank God you can get a lot of tickets to Pacers games. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have half the crowd. 
out. All right. Just wait. We're going to check our yep. engagements. <laughs> unless, unless, unless Benedict Mathering, he has a bunch of family there. Nah. Bro. I don't think he does. He's, He's from, from Montreal. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, from Canada. Whatever. Yeah, so I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Um, anyways, great feedback on LaRavia for sure. Um, analytics darling, as you would expect. Yeah. Right, they there is this has become commonplace with the analytics darling stuff. Um, same goes with Roddy, and we talked about Roddy at length going into the draft. Um, Kennedy Chandler, we didn't talk as much about, but we did say he worked out. He worked out two days ago. We know Kennedy well because of his time here at Briarcrest High School, and we know that he was uh, uh, that Ja is very very fond of him. Um, and apparently it was Kennedy's only solo workout. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it was his only one where it was just him. So they brought him in by himself. Well, and he said last night he had a very good feeling mm-hmm. about the Grizzlies. Yeah. And, and the idea that and, – and, and somebody texted me yesterday that knows, like, his people – and said they thought the Grizzlies were going to take Kennedy Chandler, that they may trade up to take Kennedy Chandler. And that was like when they just had 22 and 29. Because, right. you, you know, you never knew where he was going to go regarding the mock drafts. But I'm telling you, someone close to him texted me and said, keep a lookout for Kennedy Chandler because the Grizzlies do have interest in him. Yeah. Right? And he slipped too, right? He huh? slipped kind of. He slipped. Yeah, he kinda, slipped. He slipped. Oh, majorly. Yeah, they, 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 I mean, you know he thought he was going in the first round. I yeah. think everybody. Where are we getting him? 38, 39? There was 30, not. 38. 38, yeah. There was that one mock draft that had Kennedy Chandler in the second round. No. He got and, Sharif Cooper, man. And Zach Kleiman said afterwards in his you know talk with the media that you know they called several teams in the early 30s. They were able to. He didn't go, so they were able to get it, get it done with San Antonio at 38. But they called several teams before that in the 30s trying to move up and grab him. Mm. It's usually the way it goes, right? You just keep calling until you can find somebody that's yeah. willing to do it. Yeah. And so they found a spot and were able to get Kenny Chandler. And then they kept that other second round pick and they took Vince Williams, who we had to look up. Yeah, we did. That's a good that, that was a name out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't know. And then I go and I start like looking up Vince Williams. You guys ready for this? You're going to love this. You're going to love it. So I find this whole breakdown of Vince Williams and about how he's like such a stat stuffer. And he's, again, one of those guys, the two steals and blocks, over 38% from three. Like everybody they drafted is that. Uh Over two steals and blocks, close to 40% from three. So next year... (laughs) Find those guys. Yeah. Every guy they took fits this mold. Okay? And this Vince Williams, this one is hilarious. You love the comps. This isn't necessarily a comp, but it's a class he was in. Looking at the percentages of assists, steals, and blocks over a full season for current NBA players coming out of college since 2010. So it's the last 12 years. Mm-hmm. Vince Williams joins Herb Jones, DeAnthony Melton, Gary Payton II, and Draymond Green, as well as DeLon Wright, uh, as guys that averaged those numbers in those categories. You would say, like, all those guys are stuck. Yeah. For sure, right? And so, at least he's got, like, a pretty nice class of yeah. guys. And those are, like, obviously Draymond is, you know, yeah. a, a different level yeah. than the others. But, you know, they're all certainly guys that have made a name for themselves in the NBA. Herb Jones already, right, in one year has made it for himself. So who knows, right? But it was kind of interesting, like, you see again – you find the numbers. Like they're numbers heavy, you know? And the Grizzlies have done very, very well in drafting uh, over the course of the last few years. And so I certainly think they get the benefit of the doubt. Oh, and, man. Oh, for oh, sure. dude, jo- Johnny Hustle is going to be Oh, oh my God. God this you got year. a fun year, Johnny Hustle, because oh, you even got goodness. your boy uh, – Kenneth Lofton, no relation. Oh, Kenneth Lofton, who we joked about. We Kenny talked Lofton. about him yesterday. We, yeah. we actually talked about him too. <laughs> and 
watching his highlights this morning, my God. Yeah. Y'all got him? Yeah. I oh, should've, my yeah. God. Throw him up on the screen. This guy. This is – this is you, you think I liked awkward David Roddy? You know I spent more time watching David Roddy football highlights this morning than I did. <laughs> he was a quarterback and yeah. awesome. Awesome quarterback, yeah. Look at awesome that quarterback. Lefty shot from at, Walter. Oh, okay. yeah. Off the dribble? Oh, oh, Off the dribble? Oh, you're wrong. Oh, oh, yeah. Little, oh, you're wrong. Yeah, what this, what this guy can oh. – what Lofton can do for every chubby kid out there oh, is right? just – Look at him pushing the ball in transition. The camera couldn't even keep up with that no. speed. No. Just everything about this is unusual, and I love it. I can't love Get it bouncy. more. bouncy. Let's go. He bouncy. Oh, oh look. He, he's up and under. Oh. Step backs. Where are you going? Oh, oh my God. Oh. Come on, bro. Where Come you going? on. Oh. What is more fun than him? Let's go. Yeah. What is more fun than this guy? Got the Smash Bros. Yo. Our Smash summer league Bros. team with Kennedy Chandler, Zaire Williams, Xavier Tillman, Xavier Tillman, Vince Williams, Santi, Santi, bro, and, we're gonna be awesome. And David Roddy, let's Dude, go. Our summer league team is and Lofton, be. yeah, yo. And we just added some all ACC player from Virginia Tech. We signed to a free agent Walter deal, Smith. so yeah. I imagine he'll play summer league with us too and go oh, to training camp. It's gonna be unbelievable. Absolutely, positively unbelievable. The summer league thing is. Yeah, I, and I need uh, look for the hustle next season. I need Kennedy Chandler getting some time there, and I need Kenneth Lofton and Dino at the top setting <laughs> screens on both sides. That's right. a lot of beef. Bro. Let me tell That's you. Hey, let me tell you something about how you when you know. Your franchise is viewed differently now when you know your front office is viewed differently now. Okay? So nobody had David Roddy as a first rounder in their mockery drafts. Nobody. Okay? This was the case, uh, you know, several years ago with, you you can recall, Jordan Poole, right? Jordan Poole went and then it was like everybody ripped it. There's videos, famous videos that were being, you know, regurgitated during the playoffs of people saying, "This is what? What the hell? What is this pick? Really? You, why would you take him there? You could have gotten him way lower. You know, what are you giving stuff up to get this?" And obviously, you see the way that's played out, right? They had a conviction about the guy. They used him. They used him in the G League. They worked him up, and and then now he is a tremendous late first round success story he was going to get paid you know bukus of dollars okay Mm -hmm. so let me just fast forward to right now and the way that you know things have changed because everybody's going to have their opinion on jake laravia and they're going to give it a grade and some people as you mentioned to me earlier roser you watched our uh our our buddy uh, Sam Vecini, mm-hmm. who loves Jake LaRavia. Loves him. They're, they're, you know, I haven't found anybody that didn't like him or yeah. thought that, they, you know what I mean? Um, it's just like they may not love him, but nobody's been like, oh, that was a real stretch or whatever else. But this is when you know. The Roddy thing, by any count, and, and right before the draft, I tweeted out, second round, David Roddy. Yeah. That's the guy, like, that's the guy I like. Of, of all those names in the second round, he's fun, right? I've just been enamored with the whole thing. Uh, six, six, seven foot wingspan, like all of it. You know, I love guys yeah. like this. Awesome in college, <laughs> you yep. know. Like I'm willing to bet on that. Football background. Yeah, so, all so that anyways, stuff. so I go to my, even my own buddy Kevin O'Connor. Okay, now he does the ringer draft guide. Does a great job with it. He doesn't have Roddy anywhere near there. Yeah. So if you go and look at the draft grades today that he put up, it gets down to Roddy. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be interesting. I can't wait to see. Because this is obviously way off from big board and Bach. Mm-hmm. A plus. It was, look, basically, if Zach Kleiman has a conviction on this <laughs> and went up and did this, it's an A+. Plus. <laughs> and I'm like, damn! Oh, that's when you know things have changed, right? Because anybody else, it's like, what the hell are they doing? You didn't have to take him at 23. Why are you trading a, you know, a rotation player to get 23? You don't even have to be at 23. 
You could have gotten David Roddy at 29 or what? You know how the way this stuff works, right? Mm -hmm. Instead, it was, yo, this is obviously someone they have a conviction on. He gets the benefit of the doubt with his track record. And so, A+. Plus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. I was like, that is unbelievable, man. And he said the same thing on LaRavia. He gave it a B, but he's but he said if he's on scrum, if he's moving up for a player, chances are he'll be ahead. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, at some point they learn, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the Zaire Williams thing last year, right? That was a little bit of a stretch, I think, in some people's minds. Um, Daz was ages. People thought he was too old. Yeah. She, they, people thought he had short arms. Yep. Putting up numbers in the playoffs. Who else we get? Well, Brandon. Dr- but Dr- everybody NBC. loved Brandon. Everybody, everybody, everybody was everybody on board with like, what the hell? Yeah. Why? But they, they traded up to get him too. Yep. Right? Um, so on and on. You can go down the, the list. A- a- everybody except for Ja has been traded up to get. Mm-hmm. Every single player that they've drafted. So they have a list. They have guys that they want. And then they execute the plan. They trade up and they get those guys. Every year. Mm-hmm. Like, you know they really wanted them. Sometimes the draft can just fall some way. And, like, and we lived this for so many years where it was like, oh, they really want Gerald Green. Oh, God, Gerald Green just went to pick before. What are we going to do? <laughs> All right, we take Hakeem Warwick. And then Jerry West has to go in and do the press conference. He didn't even know where Hakeem Warwick went to college. Literally didn't know where he went to college. All right? We have one year where it was like, oh, uh, they want Tyus Jones. They want Tyus Jones. They want Tyus Jones. And, like, right before or right after Tyus Jones uh, gets taken, it's like, oh, no, what are we going to do? And it was like Jarrell Martin or it was uh, 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 Jordan Adams or whoever it was, right? Like, and this happened every year. You would just watch the board play out. We would have an awareness of who they liked. Guy would come off the board, and then it was like, okay, now who? <laughs> and that's just not how they work now. No. Yeah, they give they don't they care about they, you. they don't they care don't. about mocks. They don't no. care what you think. They no. have guys. They have convictions but about they, them, but they, they also, go and get them. But they also decide we're not going to watch this guy go off the board. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're going to go get our guy. We're going to go get him. Yep. End of story. Because we're, what we're not going to do is sit in that spot. And so they, you, you don't find out about it until they go get it, right? It's not like they traded for 23 or 22. And they're sitting there for a while. And then you got to yeah, sit there yeah. and wonder, hmm, well, now we got, we got to where we think we need to be. But what if, our guy, what, what if David Roddy gets taken 22nd? No. no. You find out right then. <laughs> like, hey, if our guy's still there, we'll make this trade with you. And then the team agrees to it, and then they go and they get their guy. So you've got to give them credit for that. The other thing is this. You know, I, look, I was a grouser, as was everybody else. For years and years and years, the Grizzlies were a pathetic drafting team. Yes. Like, bona fide pathetic. And if a fan or a media member, including myself, thought they could do better at drafting than the Grizzlies, they were right. They were right. They could do better. <laughs> A dog could have done better. <laughs> you could have just, any mock draft could have done better. You, literally you, anything. <laughs> they didn't have one guy make it to a second contract no, you, no, you literally, between Mike Conley and Jaron Jackson. No, you you seriously oh, could have done like Wheel of Fortune. 14, 14 years? It was, it's, yeah. Years? Oh, it's wild. Dude, you, you literally could have done. Not one. Holy. Got a second contract. What's that, Dylan? He was before Jaron, the year before. Fair enough. So 07 to what? And his second contract was two years after. Yep. Right. So, so 07 to 2020? Dude, you literally could have done Wheel of Fortune. Like, just put names on the thing and just spin it. And so you let me probably just say, they were better. always right. Everybody was right. I was right. Everybody was right. They were pathetic at it. And maybe it's just a trained, you know, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this. But, I mean... There was part of me last night, I got to be honest with you, and it was like, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, bro, they won 56 games. They lost to the team that ended up winning the title, and they lost their superstar all-NBA point guard in the middle of the series, and they began the series without 
their center. They never had their starting five available in the biggest playoff series of the year that they lost in a sixth game against the eventual champions. And I'm not saying that they are above criticism or you can not like anything. What I am saying, though, is, like, if you don't get the benefit of the doubt now in terms of the moves you've made, then I don't know when. We all, none of us liked Valanchunas, the Valanchunas deal. None of us. No. Well, I mean, yeah. They won 56 games. Rosa just bought the jersey. Yeah, I just bought a Valanchunas jersey for my mom, and then they traded him a week tough. later. Tough. That's tough. Yeah. All right. Yeah, can I, and I don't know, like, well, we're going to keep it forever anyway. But during the playoffs, William got a Melton jersey. He Tough. got a Melton jersey. Here, come here. Hey, He's William, here today. Yes, what He's up, here William? today. Yeah, hop on the mic. Yeah, mom had something to do. The goat. Sisters at camp. The goat himself. Yeah. Drip Lord. Te- Drip Lord. Drip Lord's here. <laughs> Drip Lord. Just stay close to the mic, Drip Lord. <laughs> you were, you were, hey, get close to the microphone. You were crushed. You admit it. Uh, the yeah, Melton, it was. The Melton thing was crushing. Yeah. He met Melton yeah. when Melton was up here. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. got a Melton jersey. Melton is amazing with kids. You know, he's, he's a, a fun yeah. player to love. Yes. All my friends were mad, too. They're all mad. Yeah, they're all mad. Mel's, uh, Mel's People love it. The kids love loved Mel. Melton. Yeah. You know why they love Melton? Because he smiles all the time. Yeah, he does not stop. <laughs> right? <Wow. laughs> he's a fun guy to yeah. like. Yeah. He's happy. I mean, it's it's easy. It's it's not easy to like the guy that's always serious. He's never serious. Yeah, he's always smiling. Always smiling. Always happy. Signing autographs for everybody. Signing autographs for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Cool number. Yeah. Cool game. You know what I mean? Athletic. Has the dunks. Has the blocks. Knocks down threes. He's fun. Yeah. He's a fun player to like, right? Melt man. All right. So now, obviously, it hurts. Now. I will tell you, we were watching the draft last night, and he went to bed. And I think this is maybe the only time I've ever – I jumped up out of my chair during the Kennedy Chandler thing. Yeah. And I, I, uh, I went and I woke him up. And do you remember me waking you up? You do? You do remember this? So I start rocking him. Yeah. He's dead. He's out. <laughs> he is out. Yeah. And I start rocking him. He's like, ah, ah. You know, you know when you get that, like, and he doesn't have his glasses on. You know, you get that like, glazed eyes over yeah. or whatever. And I was like, William. I was like, wake up. And he's like, ah. And I'm like, do you know where you are? And he's like, ah. And I'm like, do you know where you are? And he's like, in my bed? I don't remember that. Yeah. And he's like, and I was like, yeah, you're in your bed. And I said, do you know my name? I was trying to see if he was yeah. alert so he'd yeah. remember. And he goes, Chris Vernon. <laughs> and I was like, yes. And I said, I don't remember that. I said, we just drafted Kennedy Chandler. And he's like, no way. You don't remember this? No, I remember the Kennedy Chandler. Oh, I don't you do. remember the first part, though. That's true. I said, yeah, right? see? That's yeah, because you were just coming so out. Like, yeah, you were over. Yeah. You were done, man. You were done. He had gone to a workout uh, yesterday and stuff, and so uh, you know he's trying to get real swole. You know he's trying yeah. to look banish. Hey, it's swole season. It's swole season. It's swole season. <laughs> it's swole season. It's swole season. Let's go, William. Yeah, it's summertime, yeah, right? Yeah. He's got to yeah. go out to the pool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to get, you got to get start doing the push-ups, get the chest bigger, because as your ringer boss Bill Simmons said, that's it. If you're, if you could be an NBA prospect and you're like barrel chested. Like, Grizz got dibs. There it is. We got dibs. There so it clearly, is. Man, we, we got, got dibs. Chance. We want you. That's right. But, uh, we got some breaking news. Bad? Bet Online oh, has okay. just released odds on where Kevin Durant will play next. Oh, oh my no. God. Oh, no. Don't. 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 The Miami, Don't. I will get <laughs> buck naked. The Miami <laughs> Heat. The Miami Heat are the favorite at 5-2. to two. Favorite at four to one. Roser, the Memphis Grizzlies. Say it ain't so. Oh my God. Oh my 
not good to mem this. Mem this. Mem this. Did he say that? Huh? Who? 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 Did who say it? Who? Durant didn't say it. No. No one has ever said that except Rosa. Mem this. I'm uh. No. May have to go to the hospital early. Oh my goodness. Oh boy. Oh boy. You got shorts on four hours. Oh boy. Look, here's what I'm going to say. There's a reason we got four young rookies. Oh. 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 You need those little Ooh. contracts if you're preparing to take on something big. Oh, no. Oh, my chest. I made the case yesterday oh, via no. Twitter.com. I'm said, still look. making the case. And I'm asking said, look, people to perfect not crush fit. my dreams. Love, perfect fit, loves Ja, can J- go, and no drama. Jaren's favorite player, too. You can. Right, Dev? Totally recover yes, your yeah. reputation and become a go small market beloved again. Yeah, no it's drama. Sti- there no drama yeah. around here, right? And it no makes drama. that. And it makes and that. Buddy do your Warriors podcast, rivalry. Your studio? Podcast. You can use my studio. You, you can anytime use the studio. you want. Anytime you want, Kevin. And Warrior Smoke. Yeah, oh, I mean yeah. that's it. Takes oh that. God. It would take that. Oh up. my God. Oh. You critical mass. Yes. But I mean. You you want to talk about having three of my four favorite I mean, players on the same team? I mean, I mean. Oh, oh boy, oh boy. I mean, it would probably cost Bane. I would imagine. Well, by the way, oh, are the Nets that? on there? It says if not the Nets. Okay. If he's not in if Brooklyn, not the they're group- not going to move him. You can't do that if you're him. You just can't. You can't. If you're, sh- I'm sorry. I, I hate to dampen this. <laughs> now, maybe he could force his way out, but that'd be tough. You know, because he just signed the extension last year. But if you're Sean Marks, bro, that's tough. You traded every single draft pick you've got in that Harden deal. Yeah. So you'd have to get a you bunch of picks rebuild. back. You can't rebuild. You'd have to get picks. But you'd have to get a ton of picks back. I mean, uh, done. You can't rebuild. Yeah. You don't have your picks. Or, the, or you take a bunch of young guys. Because you don't want to get – you can't – if you get bad, you've just done the Pierce uh, Garnett thing all over again. Yep. And next thing you know, the Rockets are getting to draft – you know, they're by the time they're good, they're still getting to draft in the top five every year. I know. Like the Celtics did. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I just – I mean, I don't know. The, the you know guys have power right. now, yeah. obviously. And he does, because, because he we, doesn't get to steer himself either, though. So that would just be – it would be the most incredible package ever that you would have to put together. And I certainly would never want to gut this. No. no. But, I mean – I go farther with something like that than I do with anything yeah. else because I go like, farther with something like him than I would like Bradley. Beal. I mean that's like best player on a title team guy, yeah. right? There's a lot of guys, yes, like a Beal, like a Paul George. Like I wouldn't I, go I, no, crazy there's like for them. Probably yeah. like four or five guys that you, yeah, that you'd be really? willing to. Yeah. Where it's like that guy could win you a title. Yeah, seriously, he could be the best player was, in the it, series. It, it, no matter the series, and le- and right? No matter, yeah. we've seen it twice. And no like, matter the like series, you, yeah. and like you said that, I mean, you know, you you told us we were talking to the group text yesterday, and you're like, there are probably five to ten guys in the NBA that can be the best player on a championship team. That's right. That's the only way I'm well, talking about anything. And you, and we all believe Jaws one, right? Can be one, absolutely. So now you'd be talking about having two of them. Get serious. I mean, it's let's get know. serious. Anyway, look, oh Katie and Jay will read Hey, hey, who know? Hey, who knows with last night and the way it played out? Yeah. In terms of what they're going to want to do with, uh, uh, they got a lot of roster spots, man, yeah, that are filled. Danny Green. This is going to, you know, this is what I always tell people, hey, bro. You look at that roster right now, right now. I promise you that's not what that roster is going to look like when we get to training camp. No. It feels like it is. Like, oh, look at this is what they got, right? We haven't even started free agency. No. You don't know what's going to happen there. You have to see and then how you're this gonna, stuff And then out. there's going to be trade stuff. It's the way it works. It's the way it works. And you're going to 
You're going to have to even out your roster. And there is, as we learned last year, we had, and a million guys going into even training. By the time we got to training camp, there's a million guys. Mm-hmm. There is a method to the madness. Yeah. If there's anything we learned, it's that they constantly have a plan. And you just got to let it play out, right? We were, we were acquiring guys, and it was like, oh, my goodness. Like, what are we going to – like, remember, we we talked about Pat Pev. Being on the team. We had we Tony about, was reacting to huh? it. Tony, I remember Tony reacting to it. Yeah, Rondo, right? Rondo, been yeah. around for a minute. I mean, like, there's always these deals that take yeah. place. And then there's – so this thing is going to get evened out. For sure, it's going to get evened out. Yeah. I did wonder last night if it did increase the chances of the of, uh, of the Tyus return. I, I did because yeah. – look, say what you want. There's nobody that loves Morant more than me. But you have to have insurance. Because he, you hasn't, been, have he to. hasn't been able to play a full season. That's right. You have to. And he saved your ass last year. Yeah. For sure. I'm with you. Right? And you can't you can't just be like, oh, well, now we got Kennedy Chandler. <laughs> like you know, like, Kennedy you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like that's not Kennedy Bot. Yeah, he's yeah. Third Kennedy guy. will play with the hustle this year at times. Sure. I'm, not, I'm not saying full time, but he will he will have his share. Well of we needed a third point guard anyway. Exactly. 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 We needed a third point guard. So now who's that guy. second guy? As also insurance to if, you know, you hope Z- you know, Zach said Zaire will play on the ball yep. in Oops. summer league. And just like Bain did the year before. If you know, you hope Bain's improvements on the ball as a facilitator and coming off screens and every pick and roll ball. You hope his passing has it, it gets better, just like you hope Zaire's is. But you do need insurance for all that in case it doesn't progress the way you wanted it to. You know. Yeah. All right. So William, you were so crushed last night as we talked about. Have you talked yourself into this this morning? Into are what? you now excited yeah. about the guys that they drafted already? Yeah. Or are you still? I was uh, kind of mad at first, but. I don't know. Should we play I'm, exci- should we play I'm excited highlights? now, yeah. Should we play the highlights and make you feel better? Yeah. Well, Jake, I, I think play the Jake LaRavia yeah. highlights. Oh, Jake LaRavia. Oh, man. Oh, Jake highlights. Oh, act like William's not going to be all in on Jake LaRavia. Oh. Oh. For the streets. Oh, oh. sauce. Look William, look do we need sauce. to get you a headband? Look at that J. <laughs> look at J. I feel that like like J is wet. I feel, oh, my God. Wet. Where you going? Little boy. Oh, my Too little. Oh, wait. Wait till he Wait till he makes a new phone. Oh, no. Oh, where you going? Oh, where you going? My Ooh. goodness. Oh, turn around. Oh, oh, look at Larry Bird, oh, oh, Roser. Oh, oh. Okay. Dude, that look was a Larry, Larry Bird, Bird looking jumper right there. <laughs> look at Bird. Oh. Look at Bird. Oh, turn around again. Oh, oh, oh okay. my God. We need to get Parquet Floor in the <laughs> forum. <laughs> That's this is Jay. reminding me of some NBA TV. <laughs> Where you going, Brady stuff? Manic? Where you going? Oh my! Why is it always a white guy guarding him? <laughs> and these, <laughs> the brothers don't guard him. Oh my God, the I, brothers don't they, want they, any. They see that zero, bro. Like, oh, yeah, no, he ain't for us. He ain't for us. <laughs> Yeah, he ain't no Duncan, Duncan Robinson, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he was more Tyler Hero. Yeah, we gotta get Dude. Him a, give William a headband. We gotta oh, get yeah. headband. Do you want a headband now? Yeah. Jake from For Wake. Sure. Let's go. It's gonna say Jake, Jake from, from Wake. Let's go. <laughs> Jake from Wake. Jake from Wake. So, Roser does bad comps last night. Let's oh, go. my God. And you can so, tell who has not listened to our show. Yeah, over you, the get, last week. you get a, you get an audience out there that does not always consist of the people that pay attention to our show, so they have no idea that any of it is tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> Jake Laravia notwithstanding, <laughs> <laughs> who Roser tweeted, is probably the next Larry Bird, and he retweeted and said, heard that. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> heard you. Hey, he's listening, man. Jake from Wake. Heard Come you. on, Jake Laravia. He's going to wear number three, so he's missing, no- he's missing another three. He's going to wear number three. Oh, number three? Yeah. Okay. Like hold Allen on. Iverson. No, hold on now. I got something for you. Uh-oh. Hold on. Number three. So he will join Sharif Abdul Rahim, Troy Bell, okay. Anthony Roberson, uh-huh. Chucky Atkins. Shout out, Chucky. Javaris Crittenden. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I think he's still in jail. Prison. Yeah, I know. He is. Jeremy crazy. Richardson, oh. Darius Miles. Allen Iverson. J. Will. Did J. Will wear three? J. Will. Yeah, I remember him Brian wearing Brian yeah. Skinner. Wayne <laughs> Ellington. James Johnson. Jordan Adams. 
Briante Weber, <laughs> Javon Carter, Grayson Allen, and Tyrell Terry. And oh, what? Man. There are a few of those. Number three. He could be the greatest. Yeah, those are the number threes in Grizzlies really, history. They, they, there is, oh. and, 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 the, and the other kid, Roddy, yeah. is going to wear 27. And there's only been one 27 in Grizzlies history. And that is Kalen Lucas, who played five <laughs> games. <laughs> Yeah, He's and be one the of them. Twenty-seven ever. There's only been one guy that's worn twenty-seven. The only the Kalen Lucas memory is when Jarnell Stokes tried to beat him up in the huddle of an Iowa Energy game. That did happen. Yeah, sure enough, it did oh. happen. So yeah, oh. that's that's who we've got. Our people are on site. What? People are on site. Oh, they are. They're on site. The players are already around. Let's they take a quick site. break. On site. We'll they take a quick site. break. We'll we'll, uh, we'll come back right after these words. WinBet, the official sports book partner of the Memphis Grizzlies, is Tennessee's premier digital sports betting app. They're bringing you the action of real money sports betting right in the palm of your hand with some of the best odds in the game. From boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport, they have what you need to win. Sign up today and use the promo code GRIZ. And after placing your first $10 wager, you'll receive $200 to bet with. That's G-R-I-Z-Z. There's no better way to enjoy basketball than with some extra winnings in your pocket to use for all of your favorite bets. And be sure to check out the WinBet Sports Bar at FedEx Forum the next time you catch our Grizzlies in action. Betting is a team sport. Join the WinBet team and bet with the best. Must be physically located in Tennessee and 21 years of age or older to participate. If you or someone you know needs assistance with a gambling problem, call the Tennessee Red Line at 1-800-889-9789. Don't put off getting your oil changed, Memphis, the Grizzlies official partner. Take five oil changes faster than you think. There's no appointment needed. There isn't even a waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take five oil changes so fast you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take Five's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Memphis area. And remember, at Take Five, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. That means you won't even have time to show off your perfect jump shot or your killer crossover take five to stay in your car 10 minute oil change it's a grizzlies game day it's a big day Mm -hmm. grizzlies game day grizzlies at nuggets opening day in major league baseball masters day one did we ever think we were going to see tiger woods on a golf course again you didn't even mention the real sport coming back today it's kickball season again let's go i see the joy in his eyes for kickball season to begin rise and grind with jessica and megan live daily at 8 a.m on grindcitymedia.com grizz fans the official grizzlies bumble app is your key to the game it's an all-in-one experience keep track of a team with news social media and team information Plus, you can log into Grind City Media for articles, videos, podcasts, and streaming content like The Chris Vernon Show and Rise and Grind. You can see what's going on at FedEx Forum and use the app as your ticket and mobile wallet for contact-free payment in the arena. The official Grizzlies mobile app, your key to the game. Taco Bell has all the classic flavors you're craving. Order them ahead on the Taco Bell app for quick pickup in the drive-thru or get them delivered right to your door. Are you a true Taco Bell fan? Join our team and eat for free, plus score flexible hours, scholarships, and more. Apply at jobs.tacobell.com today. Hours and participation may vary by location. Additional terms and fees may apply. Franchisees are independent operators and are responsible for their own employment practices and benefits. CJ, what have you learned this week? Sometimes you just got to lean in with the storyline and and just put money on the story. Coach K playing UNC in the Final Four. Speaking of Hubert Davis, his team, they're an eight seed. I kind of want UNC to win. Also, if they both lost the game, I wouldn't care. (laughs) Get your sports betting picks and trends with Lang Whitaker and Rob Fisher, The Odds Couple, Fridays on GrindCityMedia.com and YouTube. Let's talk about all defensive teams. Yeah. Jaron Jackson Jr. Yep. Because he block blocks shots. everything. The total block blocks and blocks per game. I also have Matisse Thibel. And the Philadelphia 76ers, who leads the NBA by a wide margin, actually. I found this stat today. And blocked three-point shots. Join Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Ray Johnson, every Thursday as we debate the hottest topics in the NBA. I am HO on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and our social channels. 
HBCU Huddle with me, CJ Hurt, and Mike Wallace has all of your HBCU football, sports, and culture needs covered. We discuss the hottest stories weekly across the black college sports landscape, including the SWAC, MEAC, Tennessee State, Lane, Lamorne Owen, and all the black colleges in between. New episodes drop every Thursday, and you can stay connected with the latest stories and discussions about your favorite HBCU by going to grindcitymedia.com, selecting the podcast folder, and clicking on the HBCU Huddle tab. HBCU Huddle is a spot for all your black college sports and culture needs. What's up, y'all? This is Chase Rice hanging outdoors with an ice-cold Mountain Dew. You know, it's easy to tell who really loves the outdoors. One thing, there's a rack on your car and a hitch on the back of your truck. There's a garage full of toys from wakeboards to dirt bikes. And there's a cooler full of Mountain Dew, always at the ready. Because when it's time to get out and do, you know, hit the lake or the deer stand, a cooler of Mountain Dew, that's as important a piece of outdoor gear as your four-wheeler or your fishing rod. Mountain Dew. Do the do. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com. Presented by WinBet. Now, back to your host, Chris Vernon. Stuck in a mold that tells me I'm built for anything in this life cause I'm chose. Shit tenacity mixed with my self-control ensures that I have the thoughts of a champion on this road. Quick wear. Tell my head is have several seats and big chairs. You choose how your life plays out when there's no script there. To really build a wall, you gotta be a brick glare. Shining like a big glare. If you ain't out of breath, then you really ain't ready. You know what to do when brides are silver, don't cut it. Show and super excited. It was an awesome draft night last night, and the Memphis Grizzlies took a slew of guys. There's going to be a bunch of young guys over at the gym now, and two of them are in town from all the way from Memphis, Tennessee. Kennedy Chandler is here. <laughs> Might have slept in his own bed last night in order. We could. We could you could have come in any time. Just right down the street. And then David Roddy from Colorado State flew in this morning. Where'd you fly from? Where are you from? From Minneapolis. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, well, geez, Louise. We had the, we just got uh, – Tyus has been on the team for some time yep. now. Yep. There's not a million guys nope. that have come out of Minnesota, right? No, nah. Just a select few, but it, it's growing every year. So, I mean, we had three guys from the Twin Cities in the draft now. And so, uh, anyway, it's just growing. All right, so I got to ask you. I saw the video last night. Colorado State, that was a great video yeah. that they put out at your yeah. draft party. And there's no way to fake it in yeah. that moment. Yeah. You're obviously stunned yeah. at what is taking place yeah. when the Grizzlies uh, trade up to 23 yeah. and then your name is announced. So just kind of take me through and why you were so surprised because I think in many cases players kind of know this team really loves me and it, it, hopefully they do pull something like this off but it seemed like you had absolutely no inclination that this was taking place yeah to be honest I really didn't um, you know my range wasn't in the first round from every mock draft from every you know phone call that my agent was you know having and um, you know, again, you know, MA teams kind of keep that close to the vest and uh, don't want to, you know, spill their secrets. But um, yeah, I pretty much sat down and started paying attention around pick 18, 19. So uh, I'm glad I did because I, I would have missed it. I was planning on, you know, talking around with people probably till the late of late end of the first round. Um, and again, just just utter shock and, and disbelief. I mean, you know, Memphis, I'm so so grateful for them to give me an opportunity. And I know this is the, the right fit for me. Uh, and I just can't wait to get to work. So when you were in the, uh, e even when you were on that phone call, right, because we get a little glimpse of that, yeah. you say to them, you guys hit it well. So you didn't even have an inclination that Absolutely they, like, loved not. you. Nah. No. Yeah, no, uh-uh. I mean, it was just pretty much the reaction of every other workout. You know, they don't want to tell you the truth. They don't want to lie to you. So it's kind of just the in-between of, hey, you know, you did a great job in the workout, and we'll see what the future holds for you. It wasn't even... They didn't tell me anything. So. How much did you pay attention to the mocks? 
I didn't really pay attention to some mocks at all. You had an yeah. awareness, though. Yeah, I had an awareness for sure, just from people talking around me. But um, you know, I don't really focus on that. I just try to focus on you know improving every day and and just doing my best. So I really wasn't even focused on that. All right, Kennedy, what about you? Take me through last night and these last 24 hours. Uh, you know, it's been a crazy night. Uh, just me being at home with my family, you know, enjoying the process. And, you know, I didn't expect me to go, you know, 38. But like I said before, you know, I'm decided to just, you know, be home with my team, the Grizzlies, and, you know, I'm decided for the future. Did you just immediately go from, dude, what is happening to, oh, my God, I'm really going to play for the Grizzlies? You know, because I can only imagine like your swing of emotions, you know, through the night, right? As the picks are going off and you're going, come on. And then it just so happens you end up in this place that you know is perfect for you. Yeah, so, you know, I expected me to go first round, honestly, but, you know, it just didn't go the way it turned out. But uh, when I, my agent told me about the Grizzlies and, you know, I was very excited. You know, I got the phone call. I found out first from Ja when he called me on the phone. I, I, that's my first time. When I, that's when I found out. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. No, no, no. no. <laughs> wait. Ja Morant is the one that broke the news to you that you got drafted by the – or getting drafted by the Grizzlies? I mean, I kind of figured, you know, he gave me the phone call. You know, I know he won't give him a phone call unless, you know. What did he say? He just said, let's get it. You know, that's what he said. And did you say, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was, I just hung up the phone because I didn't want nobody seeing me on the phone with him. They would expect something, you know. But I didn't know what was going on. Then after I hung up with him, uh, my agent told me, and, you know, he called me again saying, let's get it. So, you know, I was very excited. You know, he was the first person to tell me that they were going to draft me. So, you know, it was real fun. And even during that whole, like, quarantine stuff and, you know, all the hoopers are trying to find gyms to play together, there were those pictures, those videos. I mean, you guys obviously had already built a relationship even when you were an elite preps player here. Right, yeah. So when he got drafted here, you know, he texted me asking where the hoop runs were at. And, you know, I was very shocked that he texted me. Uh, then after that, you I, had no prior relationship with him. I didn't. I had no prior relationship. He just found out who the best high school player in town was. I, I guess that's so. crazy. But you know, he's like a big brother to me. You know, he treats mom like his uh, his little brother. So uh, you know, I'm decided to play behind him and play with him as well. So you know, I'm ready to get to it. All right. So you guys obviously had built up that relationship for what a couple years now. Yeah. And even during this, even during the year, or even his year, you would see him tweet about you, and right. obviously he was mega supportive of you. Right, yeah, we got a great relationship, you know, with his family and with him as well. And, you know, we played with each other a couple of times during the, uh, the hoop runs, and, you know, we were very excited to play with each other. All right, so that's outside of, obviously, it's fun with the Morant thing. This is your hometown. Right. Right. And this is very rare for the kid to get to play for his hometown team. When you were growing up, were you were you going to Grizzly games? Were you a huge Grizzlies fan? Or, be honest, or were you one of those dudes that like always liked somebody else? <laughs> no, I was, but you lived in Memphis. No, you know I was, you know I have favorite players, but you know I was for sure a Memphis Grizzlies fan. I used to go to all their playoff games when they used to play against OKC, the Spurs, and the Warriors. You know I was a big Mike Conley fan as well, so uh, I used to go to all their games. Especially when Mike Miller played here, I used to uh, I got a great relationship with him. Uh, I went to games with his son and their family as well. So, you know, I've been a lot of Grizzlies games ever since I was a kid. You have a lot of Grizzlies games. All right, what about you? What did you know about the, what did you know about the Grizzlies? Man, I started paying attention to the Grizzlies when, when Tyus, you know, got signed here. Ah. Um, Tyus is like my big brother. So uh, another Minnesota kid, you know, played for the T-Wolves first and then moved over here. And so I started paying attention more. And then you guys, you know, started – you know, started winning a lot of games, making playoff appearances. And, you know, John Morant's just, again, he's just so fun to watch. So, um, man, I'm excited to, you know, get to it with him and, and just work out. And, um, you know, again, you guys just have a brand of basketball that, you know, is, is very similar to mine. You know, just, you know, hard nose, blue collar, ready to work, ready to compete against anybody. So i uh, got a bunch of dogs, and I'm excited to, to, you know, add to that. All right, so I'm watching last night. i got to be honest with you, David. I spent more time watching football highlights than basketball last night. Yep. Holy hell. <laughs> Yo. All right, you got to take me through this football thing. Yeah. You play quarterback. Yes, sir. You got offers yep. to play college football. Yes, sir. And so was this one of those, I think I want to be a professional athlete and I think basketball is my best route in order to do that? Or are you one of those guys that – like love football more, but you kind of know there's a there's an end to that because we had a player once upon a time, uh, Matt Barnes, right? Matt Barnes was like 
the best receiver in California. Yeah. To this day, thinks he could have been an NFL Hall of Famer, but yeah. basketball was the path he chose, and he ended up having a very long career. Take me through the choice of, because, yo, you could sling it for sure, um, deciding to play basketball full-time in college rather than football. Yeah, uh, it wasn't, you know, in between – like the love of each game, I love them both equally still. I mean, I still get the itch to play football in the fall and everything. Um, it was really about the relationships I had with the basketball coaches. Uh, it was a lot It was a lot better than the football side just because football recruits, you know, four or 500 kids a, a summer. So it was really hard to get a real connection with any of the schools. Um, you know, again, I love football. I miss it sometimes, but I know that, you know, basketball was, was the right path for me. Uh, and I trusted the school you know, who had a vision of me becoming a pro, and now, you know, again, here I am. So I uh, think I chose right. Did you ever get a look at Colorado State? Did you ever go over to the football field? Uh, I actually lived right next to the football field, the practice facility. So uh, I just saw them, you know, working out in the but morning. But you never went out there and chucked it? Nah, I couldn't. I couldn't. Nah, no. My, my coach didn't allow that. No, no, no. Not at all. How'd you end up at Colorado State from Big Ten country? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... Again, kind of the same thing. Uh, I really chose and trusted my gut with the relationships and fit that I had with Colorado State. You know, Coach Medved and, and Coach Source and the assistant at the time are both from Minnesota. So we already had that connection. Um, they believed in me. Uh, you know, I had two other Big Ten offers in, in Big Ten country, and that was, you know, it was tough to, to turn down. Um, but I knew, again, that's what was, you know, best for my future. Um, and, again, I just had a great three years at Colorado State, and I, you know, I have no regrets in making that decision. I, that was one of the best decisions of my life. So we watched you last year at Tennessee, but we didn't get to watch you your senior year here, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, because you're you going off to a pro school. Tell me about the the whole decision to leave Briarcrest, right? You play prep school for the year, and then next thing we know, we see you in Knoxville. Yeah, so that, that decision was, you know, I want to play against all the best talents in the country. And I knew that uh, me going to Sunrise, you know, I had a good relationship uh, with Kendall Brown that went there. So the team that we had there, uh, it was a real special team. Uh, I knew it was getting me ready for college by me being on my own and, you know, you know, getting ready to play with new people and meet new people as well. So uh, Sunrise was a great fit. Uh, we went all the way to the Gaco National Championship. Uh, unfortunately, we lost, but, you know, that was a great uh, to get me ready for college. If a kid asked you, should I do this, would you advise it? Yeah, I'll advise it. Is it, it fun to go there? I mean, I, like, just level with me. Is it fun? I mean, it's just it, basketball. It's just right? basketball. It's, I mean, it's not much to, you know, to have fun. It's more for you to be locked in and you focus and, you know, getting better every single day. Do you ever miss, like, senior year? Like prom and you know, like all that you're going to football games and all this stuff, right? Like it's kinda like it's kinda like you became a pro athlete by the time you're a you know, a senior in high school. Yeah, you know, I miss you know being at Broadcrest because I was at Broadcrest from second to eleventh grade. So I was there all my whole my whole entire life. But I knew it was gonna be a big decision for me to make, you know, me being twelve hours away from home, but I knew that this was going to be ready for college and, you know, for the next level as well. Yeah, and now it's paid off, right? Right. All right, so you got brothers and sisters? Yeah, I got four older brothers. So I'm Whoa, the, yeah, you're the youngest. Youngest of five. So that's why you're tough. Yeah, that's why yeah. he's yeah. tough. You for got sure. your ass kicked all nah, the time. Nah, see, no? see. <laughs> <laughs> nah, see. Nah, started. He's quick to say no, 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 no. I mean, when I was really young, yeah, I would yeah. say so. Uh, so the age gap, you know, my oldest brother, Pierre, is 27. So Pierre Roddy. Yep. What a name. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, so. Uh, he's he's 27, and you know he was actually the first person in our family to start playing basketball. So, I mean, as a young kid, I just kind of wanted to be like him. Wait, hold on a second. How old are you? 21. You have four brothers. Yeah. And they're all. He's the oldest at 27. Yeah. So they're all in their 20s. Yep, all in their 20s. Yes, Dude, sir. that's crazy. Yeah, nah, it's. Uh, was your mom just steady trying to have a girl? Trying. She at least she's trying. trying. She yeah. Kept out boys. That's <laughs> yeah. incredible. Yeah. Yeah, so um four? What kind of yeah. car did you guys have? Man, just a, like a suburban or a minivan, whatever could hold us all. Where do you get all these car seats? I mean, I'm just thinking to myself, right? right. As yeah. someone who's had two little kids, it's like what the hell? The grocery what bill was crazy. Crazy. Oh, crazy. I feel so bad. I'm gonna have to pay her back. <laughs> I'm gonna have to pay her back soon here. So uh yeah, nah. 
Uh, but again, you know, it's a very, very competitive household. Um, you know, again, I, I grew up playing football and basketball. Um, Are they all athletes? Yeah, they were all athletes. Uh, some played in college, some, you know, just stopped during high school and stuff. But Where'd your brothers go? The ones that played college? Yeah, so my brother went down to Oklahoma Panhandle State, graduated from there. He went, bounced around from JUCOs and stuff and some D2 schools. Uh, and then Josh and Dion, the closest to me, um, they both, you know, went up to Minnesota State Moorhead. So that's like on the border of Minnesota and North Dakota. So Wow. Football it. or basketball? Football. Okay, so everybody else played football? Yeah, football or yeah, football. Okay. And you were the and you were the youngest. Basketball, yep. And you're the only basketball one. Oldest was basketball too. Good? Yes. Yeah, you saw it. He yeah. he can't he ain't better than me though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he gonna try to he gonna try to keep the crown, but we'll see we'll see what happens. So take me through with your parents last night and kind of the fact that now David is actually a first round NBA draft pick. He's going he's gonna be heading off to Memphis, right? Our, yeah. Our littlest boy. Like, are you the last? Yeah, the last. Yeah. Oh, that's insane. Yeah. So four man. boys or no five. Five boys. Yep. Five boys. Between twenty one and twenty seven. Yep. That's crazy. crazy. Yeah. So what was parents' reaction last Man, night? Yeah. I mean, it was just surreal. She was my mom was so excited. Uh, I was, you know, sitting next to her on the couch and we were just she was always just telling me, Don't worry, you know, no matter where your number is called or where your name's called, just don't worry. A team will, will love you and you know, that organization will you know, will bless you with an opportunity and so um, it came earlier than expected, but uh, she was just so happy just for me to achieve my dream and she's gonna support me along the way too, so I owe her a lot. How about you with the parents last night? Take me through it. Uh, you know, they were both nervous. Uh, yeah. Um, but they were excited for me. They were happy. They knew this has been a dream of mine ever since I was a kid. So, you know, excitement after the Grizzlies calling my name. You know, it was very – all my family and friends were there. So, you know, it was just a good moment. Yeah. And then you had, like, a, what? You had a big crew. It's a hotel down here, right? The Hyatt? Yeah, yeah the Hyatt. You know, we rented the, uh, the rooftop. So, it was a lot, about 300 people there. It was – 300? Yeah, 300, like – Fifth, uh, it was a lot of people on that list. So we had uh, all my friends and family, my dad from my mom's side to my dad's side, you know, all my friends. So, you know, it was a very special moment for, for me, you know, especially for me to get drafted here when everybody's from here. So it was a real exciting moment. All right, could just a couple more things about you guys, right? What do you think you'd be if you weren't going to be a professional basketball player? I'd probably be a professional football player first. <laughs> I, think, I think that's my biggest subtle flex would be, you know, being another pro in, in a different. I'll probably be a tight end somewhere. All right, I, you can't be an athlete. Yeah, I know. Probably, probably to be honest, I'm interested in, in photography a lot. Uh, I took it during high school, so for two years, and I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, again, just taking pictures of landscapes and, you know, whatever I – Whatever I like, going into the Photoshop and editing and everything. So, um, you know, one of my one of our walk-ons on on Colorado State, uh, Trace Young, is just amazing with the camera. So, try to learn as much from him as, from him as possible too. So, what about you, Kennedy? I'll say sports broadcasting. You know, me. let's go! Don't try to take my job. <laughs> let's go! <laughs> but yeah, uh, my major is communication. Uh, I finished uh, my freshman year of school this year. I finished out. So, you know, just wanted to get my. Uh, my degree, and you know that's that's my major. You took the sports bra broadcasting yeah. classes at Tennessee. Are they good? Uh, yeah, it's real. You know, I had a real good time, and you know, I'm excited. You know, I, my major is communication, so you know, I'm just looking forward to you know continue to learn about it more. And so you want to be a broadcaster, maybe even after it's all done? Huh? Yeah, for sure. Hey, look, there's a lot of there's a lot of gigs. There's a lot of gigs right now, for sure. Yeah. All right, give me something that everybody loves that you don't. I might ruffle some feathers. Uh, oh yeah, I'm down more southern than I'm. I'm a northern guy, so I'm not a fan of country yet. So <laughs> country we'll music. Yeah, country music. Uh, Can't do it. This it's, isn't a country yeah. music. Okay, we're, cool. We're a rap town. Cool. Okay, cool. We're a rap town. Kennedy, Kennedy can let you know about Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And you can let him yeah. yeah. know about Eastern country. I can let you know about country too. But uh, <laughs> I can let you know about for sure country. Yeah. You don't like country music. Nah. Who do who who do you listen to? I mean, everybody. Who are you? Who are you the, give me the last one you were excited about, like that came out. Country or rap? No, 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 anything. I say Future. Future's album. Future. Yeah, it's, you constant, love future. it's on constant rotation right constant now. Constant rotation. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for me, I really don't know. Honestly, I started listening a little bit of country music when I started getting ten going to Tennessee. Honestly, a little bit. So uh, <laughs> oh, they got to it. Yeah, got they to it. They got uh -oh. to it. I love that uh, Morgan Wallen. You know, he's he's a big Knoxville fan. So after won SC championship, he, you know, he hit me. So I started listening. Wait, what? Yeah, so Morgan, Morgan Wallen. What a flex, Morgan Wallen. What he texted you? Yeah. Damn. 
That's so crazy. Uh, that's a flex. Yeah, so he's a real cool dude. So you know, listen a little bit country as well. So um, that's what I started doing a little bit after we won SEC championship. What do they listen to at Colorado State? Like fish, widespread panic. Yeah, like just all country. The, a bunch oh, of country. Oh, it's country. Yeah, it's, it's Colorado country. State's country. Yeah, country. Yeah, I thought it was sure. like weed country. Yeah, it was. And that's what they and that's what they yeah, listen to, right? Yeah, I mean, they listen to everything: club music, house music, <laughs> country, everything. everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I didn't know Fort Collins. Fort Collins a country place. Yeah, almost. I mean, it's like it's an hour north of Denver, so it's not too too country. I mean, you get some sides of it, you know, on the outskirts of town and everything. There's some bars that are, you yep. know, more old style. I would say uh, it's an hour, you know, away from Wyoming as well. So I mean, you got a lot of people in in that in that area and on that campus. All right, what do you like to do in your downtime? Like, what's fun? You know, I like playing video games in my downtime, honestly. Uh, you know, I've been away from my family so long, so, you know, really just, you know, when I was at Sunrise, talk, communicating with them, and I was at Tennessee, communicating with them as well. So, either that playing video games, but, you know, since I'm back home now, uh, I just got to find something to do, honestly. I kind of want to start learning to play golf. Uh, my dad, you know, when I was in California, he was uh, there with me as well. He was doing golf lessons, so maybe playing against him, man. I'm going to play some golf. Yo, your high school coach? Oh, he plays golf a lot. Trust me. Every time I go to the golf course, I see him. Oh, and he's, he's unbelievable. No, he's good. Coach Harrington, you know, he's... He can teach you how to play. Yeah, he can teach me how to play too, but, you know, he's he loves golfing. Well, uh, So what, what games? Are we talking like sports games or shoot 'em up games? Video games, I mean. Video games. No, no, no. What? Like, I'm oh. saying like the sport, like 2K and stuff like 2K, that? Or like Call of Duty two, and stuff like that? All that. 2K, Madden, Call of Duty. Those those my three games right there. I play in Fortnite as well. So those are things I do in my off time. All right. What about you? Yeah, I'm a huge Call of Duty guy. I haven't really played in a long time, but, you know, I was a fan growing up my entire life. Uh, you know, again, hanging out with family, you know, going to college and everything, it, you don't get a lot of time with family. So whenever I'm back and whenever my brothers are back, we just try to spend as much time together as possible, whatever, going shopping, going to eat, uh, going on the lake, you know, in Minnesota or uh, love listening to music. I think that's, again, something that, you know, I'm passionate about and I love, you know, learning, you know, new styles and, and new genres. So when we saw that, we, we mentioned this headline like two days ago, it said, uh, it was like out of the Colorado newspaper, it was like, uh, CSU's David Roddy says he wants to be Gen Z Draymond Green, and we were like, "You never know. Did he really? Did he really say that, or I, do you think that somebody just made I that think, up?" I think or? someone worded that a little bit differently. I'd say again, I learned from Draymond. I would say, but again, a Gen Z type Draymond. Yeah, no, I didn't say that. You did not <laughs> nah, say that. Nah, they just—it it sounds like something a reporter would ask and then put in the headline. Yeah, a little right? bit. Who do you want to be like? Man. I want to be like myself, to be honest, the best version of myself. I mean, I, I, I absorb from, you know, as many players as possible, learn from their games. Um, you know, again, a Draymond Green type player is, is someone who, you know, succeeds in the league. They just won a championship and everything. But I think I can bring more to the table offensively. Um, you know, again, that physical grit that you guys, you know, love and that, and that competitiveness, I bring that to the floor. So what about you? Uh, you know, like you said, myself as well, but, you know, I watch a lot of film with Chris Paul. Honestly, that's my, my favorite player, a lot of him, and, you know, little Jeff T as well, how he was a small guard. But nice. He, he was athletic too, you know. Uh, so that's the person I really just started watching a little bit as well. So them two guys for sure that, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, bringing wherever I got to the table. Honestly, just me defending, my quickness, my speed, and, you know, my IQ as well to the team. All right, last one. One player that you played against that you were a big fan of that was in this draft. Man, there's a lot. It was a lot. Um, I would say Jabari Smith. You know, bank on him. Yeah, Jabari. You know, we played against him uh, at home at Tennessee. He had like 30. You know, <laughs> but you know he's a tough player. He's making some tough shots that game, and uh, you know he's one heck of a player. Honestly, that I can say. I say Jalen Williams from Santa Clara. So he went to OKC. So Good one. Yeah, he was. I played against him my sophomore year, and then we were on the combine team together, and it's just crazy talent. Crazy talent. Guys, congratulations, man. Dreams come true last night, and uh, now you're going to get go and do all kinds of interviews and get all settled here in Memphis. Thanks for coming in, man. Thank, Thank you, guys. Appreciate player. it. He's making some tough shots that game. David Roddy and uh, Kennedy well. Chandler will be back after this. Chris Varnan Show. WinBet, the official sports book partner of the Memphis Grizzlies, is Tennessee's premier digital sports betting app. They're bringing you the action of real money sports betting right in the palm of your hand with some of the best odds in the game. From boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport, they have what you 
need to win. Sign up today and use the promo code GRIZ. And after placing your first $10 wager, you'll receive $200 to bet with. That's G-R-I-Z-Z. There's no better way to enjoy basketball than with some extra winnings in your pocket to use for all of your favorite bets. And be sure to check out the WinBet Sports Bar at FedEx Forum the next time you catch our Grizzlies in action. Betting is a team sport. Join the WinBet team and bet with the best. Must be physically located in Tennessee and 21 years of age or older to participate. If you or someone you know needs assistance with a gambling problem, call the Tennessee Red Line at 1-800-889-9789. Lieutenant, can you tell us what happened today? Our officers responded to a crash on I-40 westbound this morning. The driver of a pickup truck lost control of the vehicle, veered left, and went into a ditch. 911, what's your emergency? We've been in a crash. Please send someone. My fiancé is hurt. A front seat passenger was wearing a seatbelt. She survived without injury. The driver was not wearing a seatbelt and was ejected from the truck. He died at the scene. Law enforcement writes tickets to save lives. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. What a great day and great year to get a new edge out of life. Exotic Bliss has all the freshest beauty products, including lipstick, eyeshadow, and our new edge control that comes in Blissful Noir and regular. And all our products are vegan and cruelty-free. Beauty is bliss, and this is something you don't want to miss. Look your best with Exotic Bliss products. You can find us in the beauty section at all Superlow Foods store locations. Superlow Foods is a proud partner of the Memphis Grizzlies. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit Grizzly dot com slash community slash education today. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Hi, here are your three drinks and slushes. Enjoy your Sonic. Oh, the best part about the Sonic app is definitely that the drinks are always half price. This is happy hour all the time. It's happy hour. It's happy hour. Yeah. Happy hour. Oh. And we all lived happily ever after. Oh. <laughs> it's happy hour every hour with the Sonic app. Get half price drinks and slushes whenever you order with the app. This is how we Sonic. Exclusions apply. See app for details. Limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Hear that? That's the plumpest, juiciest hot dogs you've ever seen getting their grill on. But we both know what'll make it sound even better. Oh, yeah. It's a Pepsi to go with your hot dog. Because when you're chomping on America's favorite meal, relish, mustard, and onions perfectly blending into a crescendo of flavor, there's only one thing that makes everything about that moment better. A cold, refreshing Pepsi. See what I mean? It's like music to my ears. Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Ah. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com. Presented by WinBet. Now, back to your host, Chris Vernon. All eyes on me, got the whole world away. Say I'm in my bag, that's an understate. My wings got a mask, so they gonna hate. The pack got me going like a runaway. On beats, I go down like I'm from the bay. Let me demonstrate. Watch me float to the bank, I levitate. I'm in my zone, NCAA. Straight to the top, high elevate, scoring on every play. Yeah. Uh, top notch play, I ain't never been better. Yeah. Thanks to everyone who got it, now I gotta bend better. Yeah. I knew I was the man before anyone told me. Yeah. And the job ain't done till I hold that trophy. Look, uh, ball so hard, they don't know what the rate me. Yeah. Uh, pedal to the metal, I'm gone, don't chase me. Yeah. Uh, all up in my zone, can't no one phase me. Yeah. 
All eyes on me, got the whole world waiting. Look, uh, boss so hard, they don't know what the Oh, I love them, Roser. Yeah. I love them. I do. I love them. Both super cool. How about David Roddy having four brothers? I know. From 27 to 21. Five bro I'm sorry. Four brothers. So five boys between 27 and 21. That's, that is, you know what that is. That's mom. She had a boy and she had another boy. And now it's like, all right, it's time to get, have a girl. I want to have a girl. Nope. You get another boy. All right. One more. We'll get a girl. Nope. Get another another boy. boy. All right. One more. We'll finally get a girl. You know this happened to one of my best friends? Girl. Girl. Okay. I really want to have a boy. You know, we we're going to have two kids, but now we really want to have a boy, right? Wife gets pregnant. Triplet girls. Oh, God. <laughs> no lie. Hey, so that's five. Another, then he has a boy. So he has six kids. One's a boy, five Bro, girls. Bro, triplets. I was like, and the other two were already small. He had five kids that were like under the age. Can you imagine? You were like, oh, I'm going to have a boy because I've got these two girls. And your wife gets pregnant and then she has tri triplets. Three girls. That dude went from two girls to five girls. <laughs> and like, and you know, you know who else that happened to was uh, when he was here? My buddy Brandon Wright. Not triplets, but twins. He had, he had a little girl. And then he had, uh, when his wife got pregnant again, then they had twins, girls. And he was like, dude, it's now uh, my wife, the nanny who lived with them, obviously. And then three girls. He goes, I have like a man cave. And he's like, that I go to. he's like, it's five on one. It's five. I have. No <laughs> yeah. He, he's like, it's my wife, three little girls, and the nanny. That's who lives in the house with me. And I was like, oh, Brandon. <laughs> and he's like, you know, we were trying to have a boy. Yeah. yeah. To God, that's a lot of kids. And so I've had, I've had one guy that I knew that right. One guy that I knew that tried to have a boy, and he ended up with uh, triplet girls. And Brandon Wright, who played when he played here, wife got pregnant, then he had twin girls. When he was, he was trying to have a boy. I don't know, man. I, and, and on the flip side, you got the David Roddy situation. Five boys between 21 and 27? Well, so that's what that I want, is impossible. So that's what I wanted to know. Can you imagine the mayhem in the car? Well, so what I wanted to know was I was like, okay, bro, like how big was the grocery bill? Oh. Because you've got kids between oh. 18, boys between 18 and and they all play sports. And you know, I, so they're eating all the time. And <laughs> impossible to keep that house clean. Oh, yeah. No chance. Like, I remember and how it I it smells ate all the time. All the time. And they're all in their teenage years at the same time. Yeah. His mom is, must be a frigging saint. Yeah. Seriously. Most patient, she has patient the woman most patient. on earth. I mean, that is. And you know, they're beating each other's asses over, fighting over crap. Yeah. Because they're all, they, you know, they're, it's not like you're going to have five PlayStations. It's not like you're going to have, you know, there's only one basketball court. There's only one field, like, all that stuff. Now, the one good thing is you do get the hand-me-down stuff. Yeah. Everybody gets to, right? Like, you get a lot of use out of a lot of things yeah, yeah, that yeah. you have to buy. Well, you have to, you have yeah. to do the hand-me-downs because your freaking grocery bill is going to be astronomical. But then they all <laughs> played sports, too, he said. That's yeah, I, I know. So, you do, like, dude, I just remember how I ate when I was a teenager. Now, imagine, like, five, of, five guys. And let me just people, tell you, like, obviously, we got off the air. was around these guys right before. He is a freaking mammoth. Yeah, he is. He's a big guy. Yo. Like, just the show, like, just, you know, when you stand, I stood up next to him, I'm like, gee, like that, that, somebody tweeted me last night, and they were like, that dude looks like he could be a bouncer on Beale Street. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, there are very few bouncers that are that physically imposing. He's 6'6", and he's, like, barrel-chested. Yeah, he is. 
Like that dude, he. Him oh. and Bane are gonna have a bench press. Uh. Bane is not like that. No. He doesn't have the. That is a guy that could throw you. Yeah. Bane is a guy that could like beat your ass. This guy, this guy could chuck you. No, he like, looked, like it, pick it, you up and chuck you. And he, yeah, he looks like if if say, God forbid, the basketball thing that's it doesn't work, bro. He could WWE. And I'm always, I'm, and, and Bane's like this too. I'm always scared of those kind of guys too, because he's nicer than hell. Yeah. But then he gets like real. You know what I mean? It's like you got a, it's like you got a split personality. Yeah. Because you watch him play, and he's mean as hell, and he's got like this level of aggression, and it's like okay, like he obviously could just turn that on. Yeah. Like he's not like mega intense all the time. He's just like a regular dude, whatever. You know, you know who that's like. My beloved, Tony. I mean, everybody saw him in here. Tony Allen in here all the time. Laughing, jovial, fun. Funnest guy you ever want to be around. You see him on the court, it's like he's, it's like he's a psychotic. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like those, I promise you, those are the scariest guys <laughs> to me. Yeah. Right? Those are the scariest to me. They can just flip this switch and become like, I want to rip your heart out. But then they're not like pricks off the court. <laughs> those guys, those are, those are the ones you got to watch for, right? Because yeah. they could do real damage to you <laughs> if they wanted to, right? Yeah, I'm a nice guy, but don't, don't make me mad, right? Because I, I could flip out. And I'll tell you this, man, you got that guy mad, you have a problem on your hands. And I'm so happy for Kennedy. He's such a sweet kid. And I love the whole Memphis kid getting to play for the Grizzlies. I loved it back in the day with my, with my buddy Burks, Antonio Burks, and I remember that dream coming true. And obviously it didn't work out the way he wanted it to. But it was just, it's just so special to get to go to your hometown it is. It's team. A, it's amazing. And, and you know what I laughed at too? Because of my ridiculous comps last night. Yep. Oh, he loved Chris Paul? I said Chris Paul with hops. <laughs> <laughs> and, he said, and I was like, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> amazing. He does, when you watch him, like, video, like he gets really low, and he does the crossover thing to Tons get to the steals, elbows. Too. Yeah, like it Tons really, of yeah, steals. It really, he did kind of have, like, a college Chris Paul vibe to him Dude, at times. Dude, he's, but a, he's I mean, another one of those guys. He, but same, I ain't going to say he's going to be Chris Paul. No, but know. same thing, though, where he uh, – he had tons of – well, and, and Vontae Davis, those guys, did an unbelievable job. The kid, the kid jumped over 41 – or like f- over – he had a 40-something inch vert. Yeah. The highest vert at the combine. That's how you make up for being six foot tall. Yeah. But, again, he shot the hell out of the ball. Almost 40% over the t- two steals a game. Like, it's just – just lock it up. Just make a list of those guys, and you're going to find out who the Grizzlies took. Yeah. Because every single guy they added to the roster last night, same thing. Man. Unbelievable. Yeah. All right. So happy to have those guys in. Yeah. I'll, we're we're going to break down the whole draft, as it were, as time goes on. Um, it, it was shocking from the very beginning. Yeah. I, I don't want to say it's because me and William were on pa- around Paulo last week that he went number one, but it's because me and William were around Paulo last is, week. Jalen Dern's playing for the Pistons, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Is it my I, second I mean, favorite team? It was confusing as hell last night. You know I already had a soft spot because of my guy Ed Stefanski. Yeah. I love Ed. Oh, my God. Man, they got Ivy athletes. and Durant. Ivy, Dude, Dern, it, it, K, like They got athletes. They, you know, last year, Cleveland was my... Yeah. Six o'clock games. I've got an hour to kill before the Grizzlies come on. It's going to be Detroit next year. There is no question it's Detroit. The two last year were Cleveland and Charlotte. William will tell you, we love the Charlotte announcer. Oh, Terry! (laughs) Yeah. We love him. But this year... No question, it's Detroit. I love Kate. I love Ivy. I love Durin. And I like Sadiq Bay. And I love Marvin Bagley. Like, that team is. Yeah. 
They're building my dream team over there. They really are. <laughs> There's all these guys I liked in the draft. <laughs> The real and I play, and you know. I love Isaiah Stewart. Yeah, he <laughs> because I wouldn't say any different. No, no, you're not going to say anything bad about him. Yeah, he'll come for you. Yes, I'm excited. Uh, fun draft night last yeah, night, and I'm I'm really excited after meeting these kids. You know what else they always draft? Two steals or blocks, shoot well from three, high character, great dudes. Yes. Pretty obvious. Yes. I'm pretty good read on people. There's two more. Yeah. Non pricks. Yeah. It's one of the checks. Are you a prick? No. Okay, you're you at least apply. Yeah. Like <laughs> if you're a prick, we throw you out of the pile. We don't have any time for you around yep. here. You know what I mean? So thrilled for those guys and their dream coming true. Um thanks to Devin Walker. Thanks to King William. Thanks to John Rose across the glass. Thanks to Robbie and Jacob back in the studio. Until Monday. Everybody have a wonderful and safe weekend. We'll talk to you then. Until then, we go.